Bruchim Habaim! It's so wonderful to be here with you at Bethel to virtually celebrate and install an amazing, amazing rabbi, Rabbi Michael Schwab, to be the senior rabbi. Um, I can't imagine Bethel without you, and uh, I'm so excited and so proud to get to be here to honor you in this moment. Bruchim Habaim, we're going to welcome you with this blessing, this prayer for peace in our home, serenity in our sanctuary. Yehi Shalom Bechelech. May all the years that you are serving at Bethel and beyond be years of peace, tranquility, harmony, intention, and prayer. In your journey through life, may the world make you smile. May you live each new day through the eyes of a child. May success be your aim to achieve all your goals. And wherever life leads you, may you find your way home. Yehi shalom bechelech. Yehi shalom bechelech. Shalva ve'armenotayich. Yehi shalom bechelech. Shalva ve'armenotayich. May you sing a new song and keep love in your heart. You've had joy all along. It's been here from the start. May you never be lost. May our home become yours. Let us join in together as we open our doors. Yehi Shalom. Yehi Shalom Bechelech. Shalva ve armenotaich. Yehi shalom bechelech. Shalva ve armenotaich. Just like that. Yehi shalom bechelech. Shalva ve armenotaich. Yehi shalom bechelech. Shalva ve'armenotayich Bruchim habayim Bruchim habayim Shalom, shalom aleichem Bruchim habayim Shalom, shalom aleichem Welcome, peace in your home in your sanctuary Welcome peace in your home Serenity in your sanctuary Bruchim Habaim Bruchim Habaim Shalom Shalom Aleichem Bruchim Habaim Shalom, shalom aleichem. Yehi shalom bechelech. Shalva ve'armenotayich. Yehi shalom bechelech. Shalva ve'armenotayich. Mazel Tov, Rabbi Schwab, and to the whole Schwab family, Mazel Tov. Mazel Tov to the entire Beth El community. It's a really wonderful celebration. This one is a Schwab family favorite. El Baruch, all about all the different letters that we can use when we're praising God. One letter for each word of this song. And when we say all these letters, even if we don't know exactly the words that we want to say, the words that we want to use to praise, these letters form themselves into the sentences, the building blocks of all of creation. Just like all of creation is made up of all these letters, all these H's and O's and C's, the trees and the humans, all made up of the same letters. So too all the words, all the words that we can say in praise. El Baruch Gedol Deah Tov Yatsar Kavod Lishmo 
me o rod na tan svi votu zo. El baruch yedol deya, echin ufal zohorei chama. Tov yatsar kavod lishmo, me o rod na tan svi votu zo. No tsuva of Kidoshi Rome and me shadai Tamid misaprim Kevodel Kevodel Uktu Shato Elva Rok Kidol Dea Thank <laughs> Supreme One last time, El Baruch. El Baruch, Yedol Deya. Echin ufal, Zohorei Chama. Tov Yatsar, Kavod Lishmo. Meorod natan svibotu zo. Meorod natan svibotu zo. One last song to celebrate. This is Hamet Yira, all about how we can become partners with God in the act of creation. May there always be new inspiration, new invention, new intention, setting at Bethel to welcome in all the new people that we can and bring this community together in more ways, in stronger ways. Kenya here at Zone. Hum, 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 Uh-huh. 
Mazel Tov, Rabbi Schwab. Mazel Tov to all of Bethel. Mazel Tov. My friends, welcome. I hope everyone can, can hear me. Can I get a thumbs up if you can from the panelists? Terrific. I see that we have over 300 uh, uh, and growing uh, participating at this moment. And I would say to each of you that the chat function is open. So if you wanna send a message to Rabbi Schwab, please feel free to do so. Again, welcome, what a special day this is. Together we gather finally and virtually for the installation of Rabbi Michael Schwab as our senior rabbi of North Suburban Synagogue Bethel. In addition to you, our members, we have with us today a number of people who are special to Michael, family, friends, teachers, and mentors who shaped Rabbi Schwab and made him the person, mensch, and leader we're so honored to have as our rabbi. You'll be introduced to many of them during the course of today's program. One very special person is already well known to all of us, our beloved Rabbi Emeritus, Rabbi Vernon Kurtz, who's joining us today from Israel. How special to have the torch passed directly from one great leader to another. Rabbi Kurtz, we're so happy to see you. We're delighted you're with us today. Let me pause for a moment and, thanks, and thank the folks who made today happen. Our co-chairs and honorary co-chairs, Nina and Arnie Harris, Gail and Andy Brown, Beth and Jeff Copen, Nancy and Maury Fertig, Erica and Zach Linden, Jeff and Lisa Rosencrantz, Danielle and Jonathan Pearl, and Lynn and Skip Schreer. I would also like to thank the entire Bethel staff, especially Judy Berkeley, our Director of Membership and Development, and our Executive Director, Jeff Baden. Without them, this would not have been possible. Thanks also to all the members of the Installation Committee and to Kim Ephraim, our VP of Development and Fundraising. Finally, a reminder that immediately following the installation, hop in your cars for a drive-by parade in the Bethel parking lot from 2.30 to 3.30 for, or let's say an hour when we're done, I think we're running a little bit behind, um, for an opportunity to share your personal well wishes directly with Rabbi Schwab. And now I'd like to introduce you to one of our great installation co-chairs, Mr. Arnie Harris. He'll be followed by Andy Brown on behalf of our honorary co-chairs. Arnie, floor is yours. Thank you, Thank you so much. Ron, and I appreciate it. Michael, or as we all know, Rabbi Schwab, Nina and I have been members at Bethel since 1988. When we made the switch with, with Rabbi Kurtz from Rotfeit Sedek in Hyde Park to Bethel in Highland Park. After a long list of rabbis, you and Erica arrived on the scene. During your interviews one night, we were assigned to take you and Erica to dinner. From that evening, which I think was at Blind Faith Cafe, we realized that Bethel had found a very, very special couple. For years, you and Rabbi Kurtz have made a perfect match. But now, Michael, you have become our spiritual leader. You deserve this role. You have earned this role, and our congregation is blessed to have you in this role. And you will lead us during these difficult times and beyond, and I know you will do so with love, confidence, and humility. In fact, Michael, taking the helm at Bethel means, as Rabbi Kurt set the example, means that you are not just our leader, but you have now become a leader of the Jewish community in North America and beyond. 
You have already proven your leadership skills, but we need you and we need your leadership now more than ever. Rabbi Kurtz left Bethel in a position of great strength and that you and all of us are benefiting from that. But as we know, 2020 and beyond has brought an incredible amount of challenges to our community, as well as a couple of new opportunities. So Michael, I wanna to say to you, Rabbi Schwab, I wanna to say to you, it is your time. It is your turn to lead us with strength, with vigor, with enlightenment, with courage, and with candor. And I know you will do so. So on behalf of a very grateful community, and on behalf of my fellow co-chairs, my wife Nina, Danielle and Jonathan Pearl, Erica and Zach Linden, and Beth and Jeff Copen. Michael, would you please step up to the podium where you will find a gift on the shelf. I'd like you to I ask you to take that gift out. There you go. You found it. You may open it if you can hear me. Very good job of opening under pressure. A wonderful to fill in set. So Michael, with that gift, we wanna wish you a hearty mazel tov and may we all go from strength to strength. And from there, I would like to turn it over to Andy Brown. Hello friends. Some of you might remember me. I'm Andrew Brown, and I was president of Bethel a few years back. That's when I would end my Shabbat service remarks saying, it's a great day. And speaking not just for myself, but also the other honorary co-chairs of today's event, my wife, Gail, and my friends, Nancy and Maury Fertig, Lisa and Jeff Rosencrans, and Lynn and Skip Schreyer, today, is beyond a great day. From Psalm 33, sing gladly, O righteous of the Lord, for the upright praise is befitting. Acclaim the Lord with the lyre, with the 10 stringed lute hymn to him. Sing him a new song, play deathly with joyous shout. For the word of the Lord is upright and all his doings in good faith. He loves the right and the just, the Lord's kindness fills the earth. Some things in life are just meant to be. If you look at much of our faith's history and the thousands of pages of commentary in our faith's <coughs> in commentary in our holy books, lots of it is a discussion trying to fathom the meaning of events and circumstances that are really only known to Hashem. So perhaps Bethel was raised up for some special blessing when Erica and Michael Schwab came to our community. And for us to evolve from one great leader, Rabbi Vernon Kurtz, to another great leader, Rabbi Michael Schwab, seems to indicate that we may be doubly blessed. We are all indeed so very fortunate. We've been living through some challenging times and the road ahead won't be easy. So it's important that we all rally around our leadership and our community and optimistically look forward to brighter days. No one is better equipped and prepared than Rabbi Schwab to raise high our banner and to lead us forward in our life and faith journey. Rabbi Schwab, we all congratulate you and are excited Today, the day of your installation has come. Stay well, all.
Bruchim Habaim! It's so wonderful to be here with you at Bethel to virtually celebrate and Shalom, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Good. Congratulations. Mazal tov to Beth El Synagogue congregation. Mazal tov to my dear friend, uh, 
Rabbi Schwab, and of course to all of you, and especially my uh, friend in Israel, Rabbi Bernard Kirtz. That's a great opportunity to be with all of you today. Uh, on behalf of the Israeli consulate, right here in the Midwest and in Chicago, it is an honor to bring greetings on behalf of the state of Israel on this amazing occasion. Uh, we all know indeed that uh, the recent period of time had a lot of global and local challenges that we all face from global pandemics to social unrest through economic recessions, anti-Semitism, hate, you name it. However, when we are in these kind of situation, we are yearning for two things, if I am not wrong. One, we are yearning for a new beginning. And two, we are yearning for leadership. And in this case, new beginnings are really essential. Elie Wiesel said once that humanity has a secret, which is not just the ability to begin, but to begin again. But he also said that for that, we need true leadership. And I think today, an installation of the rabbi, the main point is not the word installation, but rather the rabbi. And the leadership of you, your leadership, Rabbi Schwab, is something that we are all yearning for in this new beginning of an era that will hopefully bring only good news. We know that we will, uh, we know together that we don't want to take for granted all your amazing, well done job until now. You're continuing the tradition and the heritage of, as I said, my good friend, Rabbi Vernon Kurtz. And we don't take for granted the fact that you're fostering the Jewish values, including pursuing justice, including pursuing the truth and the peace. We know that in Israel today, we are working to push forward the peace. And many of you know that in a couple of hours, we're gonna have the first nonstop direct flight from Israel to Dubai. And we will continue working the peace with many of uh, you supporting us from the congregation and with your leadership. So fostering the Jewish values, building the community, especially with the, new, the young generation, which is a crucial message. And thirdly, enhancing the connection to Israel, the bond between your congregation and between the state of Israel with an amazing flag of Israel, which is not just behind me, but also behind you and your family indicates where your heart is, where your, where your brain is, and when you want to take your congregation forward. So with no further ado, I want to wish you, your family, your congregation, first of all, Shana Tova Umetuka. Second, congratulations, Mazal Tov. And thirdly, all the best from your friends at the Israeli consulate in Chicago. Shalom. Thank you. Rabbi Schwab, on this momentous occasion, I wish to share with you a Devar Torah. And these days, we're reading about Moshe Rabbeinu at the end of his life as we conclude the Torah. And this is a story of Midrash, which I know you know well, from the beginning of Moses' life. And it's something God saw in Moses before anyone else did. The Midrash in Shemot Rabbah tells a story about when Moses was shepherding the flock, the sheep of his father-in-law, Yitro. And one day, one of the sheep just ran away, just wandered off. And Moses followed after it and discovered it came to a small shaded place. And the, the lamb found a little a little pool of water, a puddle, and it started to drink. And Moses approached the lamb and said, I didn't know you ran away because you were so thirsty. You must be so tired. So Moses put the lamb, the lamb on his back and carried it back to the flock. So God saw this and God said, because you tend the sheep of, of sheep with such over because you tend the sheep of people with such love, I swear that you will be the shepherd of my sheep, my flock, Israel. So this is a story that if Moses cared for every last sheep and didn't get angry when he could have and carried on his back when he needed to, then God said, this is the perfect leader for my flock, the people. And you, Rabbi Schwab, you care about each one of us and you will carry each one of us on your back if needed. Like Moses, you are a leader who knows true leadership is as much about love and what happens out of sight 
and caring for each one of the community as it does about the big things. May God bless you as you continue to lead this block, a community of Bethel to great heights. I'm very excited to introduce our next speaker, Rabbi Barry Dove Katz. Michael, I once heard a Dvar Torah by a rabbinical student who reflected on the paradox of the holiday of Sukkot. The student noted that it's supposed to be a holiday of great joy and we're told rejoice in your holiday and yet we celebrate it by sitting in a sukkah which makes us vulnerable, especially in the fall in Chicago, I imagine. So how can a person reach the ultimate heights of happiness while they're feeling vulnerable? And the answer that this rabbinical student offered was there's a certain kind of joy that is only felt when a new chapter of life is open, when a new beginning is made. At the very moment you decide to make any type of serious change, at the start of any new beginning, you are vulnerable. However, if the change was made in order to improve your life with the lives of others, a sense of great joy and achievement and satisfaction is felt. Michael, those words were ones that you shared 17 years ago as a rabbinic intern at the Conservative Synagogue at Israel of Riverdale. Thanks to a robust hard drive, I found a draft of one of your very first Divrei Torah on my computer. All those years ago, you displayed wisdom and compassion and curiosity and the desire to connect Yiddishkeit with the lives of people. I hope that you allow those words from your younger pre-rabbinic self to seep into your soul. You've been at Bethel for many years and even as we celebrate this installation, this new beginning, I know that there's a lot that's not new for you and your family. You know the community, I bet your kids know every nook and cranny of that shul and the community knows you, your capacity for hard work, the easy way you relate to people, your dedication to the Jewish people. And yet this is a new start with all of the joy and the vulnerability that comes from new transitions. And this transition comes as most people in the world experience what it's like to be exposed, to feel open to forces they cannot control, trying to hold on to joy, even as we know just how precarious life can be. Bethel, you are so lucky to have Rabbi Schwab as your leader. As he has done for many years, he will care and work hard for you and with you. He will help you find your way through this time, and I hope for many, many happy years with grace, with a commitment to eternal values, with integrity and strength. I hope that you treat him and his family with great care. It's a hard time to be a rabbi. Some of the very traits that make rabbis great, a willingness to cultivate human relationships, humility, honesty, and openness, leave them vulnerable. We need to take care of our leaders so that they can take care of us. What many people might not know is that my shul here in the Bronx has many Schwabs, all related to your Chicago Schwabs. We have, I believe, one of the highest percentages of these Schwabs per pew of any shul in the country. What that means is that our communities are connected in a deep and wonderful way. Dear Michael and Erica and family, it is such an honor to have you as part of my life and the life of my family for all these years. I love learning from all of you and thank you for including me in this wonderful day. Enjoy the celebration. I have known your rabbi, Michael Schwab, since he was in high school. I was his counselor at a USY encampment. And from that time on, our paths were intertwined. We both went on Nativ, we staffed USY on wheels and pilgrimage together. We both went to Rutgers, we entered rabbinical school together. And most recently we were fellows together for three years at the Hartman Institute. Now, usually at an installation, my job would be to let the community know how lucky they are to be led by their new rabbi. But actually your lives have been intertwined with his for the past 16 years. So you already know him and you know him well. You already know that he is one of the most sincere human beings you will ever meet, that he lacks pretension, that he is constitutionally unable to be anything but who he is. And who he is, is a man of integrity, benevolence, tenacity, and lots and lots of heart. People like Michael are rare. 
You never have to guess where you stand with him. You know that he'll show up for you when you need him and he'll show up when you don't. He will give you his heart and he will give it to you over and over. And this heart that he's given to you is precious. It's earnest and loyal and it's deeply enamored with our Masora, our tradition. And since you already know these things about your rabbi, my job today is a little bit different. It's to remind you that you have to protect Michael's heart. You have to care for it so that it remains open and loving and trusting. And you have to care for Erica and their children because they live at the center of his heart. The Degel Machana Ephraim comments on a verse in this week's Parsha that captures exactly this message. In discussing the blessings due to God's faithful, the Torah states, Uva'u alecha kol ha-berachot ha-elu ha-ele guha. All of these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Now, if the Torah states that the blessings will come upon us, uva'u alecha, why does it also say that they will overtake us? Vihisi guha. And the Degel's answer is gorgeous. He says that we're not usually conscious of our blessings. They are invisible to us as we go about our lives. And recognizing this, the Torah personifies our blessings. This is gorgeous, right? It makes our blessings actors in the world. It's as if the blessings overtake us and they grab us and shake us so that we notice and appreciate them. So today on this joyous day for your community, the many blessings of Rabbi Schwab's rabbinate are here with you and they're shaking you, insisting that you see them, reminding you that in Michael Schwab, you have found a gem of a human being and it is your job to never take him for granted. That's not an easy task. As Rabbi Katz just said, we take our rabbis for granted we get angry when they make decisions that differ from one we want, what we want. But over time, the heart that he has given you will begin to harden if you don't protect it. So it's your job, Bethel family, to ensure that he can continue to do with that pure heart that which made you fall in love with him in the first place. Take good care of your rabbi. Make it a position on the board, maybe. So you've won the rabbi lottery. During our time at Hartman, which was actually meant to be a break from shul, Michael would invite me for coffee or lunch so he could process his work, so he could strategize on his vacation about the best way to serve you. He works really hard. So please do your work to always see and appreciate the blessings that actualize from this service. I can't imagine a better leader to guide a community, both through a pandemic and in good times. So I wish you many years of joy and spiritual growth under Rabbi Schwab's direction. May you go from strength to strength. And, and I look forward to celebrating his 25 years in the Rabbinate Gala with you in person with mini hot dogs and beer, just the way he would like it. Mazel tov. Religious leadership in the biblical period was divided between priests and prophets. Priests were the watchdogs for stability and continuity, guardians against unwarranted and unacceptable incursions into Jewish practice, transmitters of the law, guardians of the cult. The function of the prophets, on the other hand, was to rail against injustice, oppression, and iniquity. They were the conscience of the nation, calling to task everyone, from the king to the poorest commoner, for being insensitive to the values and ideals which underlay the established norms. They transmitted inspiration, not law. 
the time allotted to me does not allow me to dwell on the pluses and minuses of each, but they are there. And I leave to you to think about them. But from the biblical period until today, both of the elements of religious leadership reflected in priests and prophets have been entrusted to rabbis. The rabbi must be the spokesperson and guardian of fixed traditions, must transmit the law as received for the sake of continuity, but at the same time must receive God's word anew and transmit the products of inspiration and spontaneity. The rabbi must guard against placidness and stultification, while at the same time guard against anarchy and chaos. To Rabbi Schwab, I say, remember well both of your functions, as difficult as it is to fulfill them both. Neither is more important to your successful fulfillment of your rabbinic mission than the other. Both are absolutely critical. To the members of Bethel, I say, you may each prefer your rabbi's fulfillment of one or the other of these functions. But you must train yourselves to know that any rabbi who fulfills but one of the functions, but not also the other, is failing in religious leadership. You must train yourselves to see your rabbi as both priest and prophet and nothing less. Help your rabbi to continue with his success in his rabbinate by listening to him as he speaks and leads in each of these functions as priest and prophet. My blessing to Rabbi Schwab and to Bethel, wishing them a continued long relationship of mutual love. Amen. There is a past in every portrait, there is a truth in every tale, and all the days that came before us are as the wind upon our sails. Forest in every father as he stands amidst the wild. There is a mountain in every mother, a sturdy force of heart and mind.
weeks, but it's never gone. Jewish people has been entrusted with Torah Chaim, the Abad Chesed, Utsdaka, Bracha, Brachamim, the Chaim, the Shalom, a Torah of life, the love of kindness, righteousness, blessing, compassion, life, and peace. The calling of the rabbi is to spread that Torah with these crucial values within the Jewish community with whom we are privileged to have contact. How do we do that? First, we have to learn the tradition ourselves, to become fluent in language and values and content and books and prayers, which is a lifelong job. The dedicated rabbi not only takes his rabbinical school studies seriously, but continues learning throughout life. Then we search for opportunities to pass on that knowledge to anyone and everyone who's willing to learn from us. Or as Rabbi Akiba once said, which really means more than the student wants to learn, the rabbi really, really wants to teach. There is a second way that rabbis bring Jewish tradition to those with whom we have contact, and that's through the actions we display in our dealings with our fellow human beings. It is crucial that a rabbi's behavior reflects those very values that our Torah teaches. Empathy that comes with the search for rachamim, for compassion. The actions that make up chesed, kindness. The ability to listen, truly listen to others who are searching for their own sense of shalom. As central as they are, Torah is not just the history of our origins of the people or the source of mitzvot ben adam lamakom, those commandments between God and humans remind us of our relationship with God and our people is equally the source of mitzvot ben adam l'chaviro, the commandments detailing how we treat each other. And the rabbi needs to strive to be an exemplar of how we as Jews relate to our fellow human beings. Michael, as your, rab- as your uncle, and as a longstanding friend of Rabbi Kurtz and Bryna, I've had the privilege of spending many Shabbatot in North Suburban Synagogue Bethel throughout the years. It's given me the pleasure of watching you teach Torah. I have come away impressed by your knowledge of our heritage, impressed by your passion for the texts you've taught, impressed with your enthusiasm and commitment helping others understand the tradition we're trying to pass on. I read the messages you sought to bring to your community on the high holidays. I've noted those messages come from the heart, and they always seek to bring God's Torah to all of us. And even more, I've seen the compassion and care you display with each member of the congregation approaches you, the empathy and listening skills that must be the hallmark of the congregational rabbi. And so I know that you will continue to bring that passion and that commitment for the next 25 years and more as you guide your congregation in the light of our understanding of God's expectations for us. From all of us Schwabs here in the Bronx and scattered throughout the country, from all the rabbis with whom we've been in contact, Mazal Tov and Yasha Koach, on this special day for you and your community. Thank you, Rabbi Schwab, for your words. It is now our pleasure to welcome to the podium Rabbi Erica, Rabbi Erica, Erica Schwab and her family.
Thank you to everyone who has worked to make sure this day was special. Thank you to our dear friends and family who support us in so many ways. And thank you to this vibrant Bethel community who welcomed us here 16 years ago and continues to grow with us in good times and in difficult times. Michael, we stand here today to honor you as you are officially installed as the senior rabbi of North Suburban Synagogue Bethel. In the fourth chapter in Pirkei Avot, Ben Zoma stated, who is he that is honored? He who honors his fellow human beings, as it, is, as it is said, for I honor those that honor me, but those who spurn me shall be dishonored. Michael, you deserve all the honor, as you not only honor God through following Torah and its commandments, but you honor all people that you come in contact with, whether it's a congregant, a community member, a student, a family member, a friend, or a stranger. You listen intently and patiently when someone has a question or just wants to talk. You make time for all who need you and those who, who want to be with you. You encourage those around you to learn and to do without ever making someone feel bad about what they have done or are not doing. You strive to make others happy. You are kind and sincere, intelligent and insightful, in your interactions with others and are truly example for all who are around you. These past six months have not been easy. However, Bethel has risen to the occasion and has continued to be a vibrant place, changing and growing while remaining true to its values. It is due to your leadership that this is the case. You have worked day in and day out, planning, meeting, innovating and balancing to provide for those around you, both for the community and, sorry, and for our family. And you have done an amazing job. Michael, <laughs> I love sharing this journey with you. Thank you for always honoring us with your love, your attention and your time. We are so glad to have the opportunity to honor you and we look forward to many more milestones in your future. All right. Oh, sorry. Hello. Hello, my name is Ari, and today, what? Uh, and today is a very special day for my dad. Today he becomes senior rabbi of the shul, as you know. As, as a dad, he is very kind and funny. He rarely ever raises his voice, and he's supportive of everything I do and everything my sisters do. As a rabbi, he is an amazing writer, and he helps whenever he is needed, even if it's at the last minute. I don't love sitting down and listening to someone speak for a long time. When he gives his sermons, I really enjoy listening to them. Abba, today is a very special day for you. I hope you enjoy the day and remember it forever. Leadership really suits you, and I hope you lead this show to many great things. Love you, and happy installation day. My name is Liana. I, uh, my Ava is very funny and tells terrible jokes. I like to read with him and also like to jump on the trampoline with him. He helps me play basketball and it's fun to play with him. He also is very caring and does a great job at teaching Torah and being a rabbi. I love you. Hi, this is Noah, and I'd like to say a few words about my Abba. As an Abba, I love when you read Septimus Heap to us, jump us on the trampoline, and make bad jokes. As a rabbi, you do a great job helping all the kids learn first, making people happy. I love when you take me to the attic and basement. You are the best rabbi. I love you.
Hi, my name is Mary. Uh, when I think of you as a rabbi, I think of you as great. You're great at, you're a great leader. You're great at writing sermons, and you're great at reading Torah. Things I like to do with you when you're a rabbi is dancing on your shoulders on Simchat Torah, and you're always talking to us to the oh, taking us to the attic. When I think of you as my Abba, I think of you as awesome. You are fun to play with, nice to cuddle with, and I love reading with you. You're loving and I love you. They're the best. Hi again, everyone. For um, over 25 years, I've had an, a number of occasions to introduce our next speaker, Rabbi Vernon Kurtz. Each time I've had the privilege of doing so has been a special one. Um, I was, <laughs> after the last time, I really didn't know there'd be another one. I'm delighted that there is. I'm delighted that it's this occasion. And Rabbi Kurtz, I look forward to finding many more occasions where we could do this again. Rabbi Kurtz, take it away. Erev Tov to everyone from Yerushalayim, Ira Kodesh. It's nighttime here, middle of the afternoon in Chicago. If you would see me on the streets of Jerusalem at this point, this is how I would look. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing you on the streets of Jerusalem right now. So I look forward to the time when this can come off and you can walk the streets of Jerusalem and we can be in touch personally. To the questions that we've received, we are fine managing the family as well, Bryna as well, and God willing, in two weeks, we will celebrate the bar mitzvah of Shmuli, Adas and Chaim's oldest son, our first grandson. We're still not sure exactly how it'll occur, but we're really looking forward to it. It's my great pleasure to be with you, at least virtually, and to be the installing officer for my dear friend, colleague, and successor, Rabbi Michael Schwab. I thank him personally for this great honor as he officially becomes the senior rabbi of North Suburban Synagogue Beth El and the first occupant of the Vernon H. Kurtz Senior Rabbinic Chair. It is a time of celebration, commitment, and dedication, both for Rabbi Schwab and the Bethel community. I'm so pleased that I can join you from Jerusalem for this event, though I must admit, I would have liked to have been with you in person to see your smiling faces and to greet you all with a personal hug. Since that is impossible in the world in which we currently live, this is the next best thing. So let's be grateful for our health and for being able to be together through the miracles of modern technology. As you've heard, I've been privileged to know the extended Schwab family for over 45 and almost 50 years and have a special relationship with many of them. When Michael Schwab joined the Bethel staff in 2004, I was pleased that he was somewhat of a known quantity. Over the years of our working together, a very special and unique bond was created between the two of us. Frankly, we probably spent more time together than with our individual families. And we quickly learned to work together, to trust one another, to rely on one another, and to truly respect one another. For 14 years, we worked together as a team. Over the years, Rabbi Schwab assumed more and more of the administration of the educational vision of the synagogue, and in time became involved in every aspect of our program and our mission. It was, and frankly for me, still is, a great pleasure to see his growth into a rabbi deeply respected by our congregation, the extended community, and his peers in national and international venues. He is a caring and sensitive pastor, a gifted teacher, a strategic thinker, and a respected community leader. To him, 
Erica and the entire family, all the generations. I say on behalf of Brian and myself, Mazal Tov, and may you always go Mechayel El Chayel, from strength to strength. An installation is really a covenanting ceremony. It establishes a pact or a ceremony or an agreement between two components, a rabbi and a congregation, a community. Both take upon themselves responsibilities, duties, and obligations. Both promise to do their best to make the relationship work and to advance their visions. Rabbi Michael Schwab takes upon himself the sacred task of being rabbi, preacher, and teacher, as the document of his ordination says in the Bethel community. As a teacher, one must also be a student. Our tradition calls a scholar a Talmid Chacham, literally a wise student. We never stop studying, for in that personal study we grow not merely in mind, but also in spirit and in soul. Dr. Solomon Schechter, the president of the Jewish Theological Seminary from 1902 to 1915, in his address to the graduating, at the graduating exercises of the seminary on June the 7th, 1908, stated that the Torah is the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob, not the possession of a single individual. And the rabbi is not only responsible to his congregation, but to the whole of Israel for its preservation and perpetuation. To be the servant of Torah means to labor in Torah, to be constant learners as long as you remain constant teachers. All those who serve the Jewish people bear the challenge of maintaining a love of Talmud Torah, of studying it and of living it. Rabbi Schwab understands this well and embodies Dr. Schechter's statement. As he has done in the past, it is his continuing responsibility to make fixed times for the study of Torah. And I also believe it is the obligation of the congregation to allow him to do so. For in his growth, the members of the community grow as well. One of the roles of the rabbi, as you heard from my friend, colleague, teacher, and fellow Jerusalemite in a few weeks, is to be a prophet. Rabbi Joel Roth told us that. And to push, cajole, influence, and encourage members of the congregation to become more than they currently are, to grow in their Judaism, and to live moral and ethical lives. The rabbi is to be a preacher in the best sense of the word, calling for justice, equality, and mercy in the community and in society at large. The world in which we live, we all know, offers many challenges. Rabbi Schwab, it is important that you speak out on important Jewish and human issues. Sometimes your views may be unpopular. Sometimes you may feel that there is no one out there listening but that does not diminish your responsibility to let your voice be heard on the issues of the day. Schechter told his students in 1908 that ethics are good, but laws and commandments bidden and commanded by God are better. Our Torah proclaimed, he said, the love of God with heart, soul, and might, and the world accepted it as the consummation of its purpose. It taught the love of neighbor as oneself, and the world appropriated it as an original inspiration. But together with this, Israel proclaimed the love of law. And it is through this love and adherence to law, what we call halakha, that the love of God and the love of our fellow man is made effective. To urge this upon your community in all its force and all its significance seems to me, Schechter told the graduates, to be the, is the mission of the rabbi of the present generation. Well, not much has changed since 1908, almost a century later and more. It is the still the mission of our generation as well. And Rabbi Schwab, you must assume it with clarity of vision and mind. Dr. Schechter told the students that the ancient sages looked with some suspicion on the overpopularity of the rabbi with his community thinking as they did that it might be the result of his failing to admonish his flock in matters of heaven. His talk was entitled, Rabbi as a Personal Example. All of us, all of us who have gone to Camp Ramah heard the word dugma, to be an example. Our deeds and our actions 
are our true teaching tools. The Rambam, Maimonides, in his Mishnah Torah, Hilchot Yesudei Torah 511 writes, if a scholar restrains himself, speaks politely to his fellow human being, and when among them acts like one of them and receives them pleasantly, takes abuse from them, but never gives abuse to them in return, respects them, even those who do not respect him, acts in business honestly, performs his duties exceedingly more than the law requires, so that all praise him and love him and crave to imitate his actions. Behold, he does imitate God, sanctify God. Rabbi Schwab, in your daily actions in your home, in the community, and in the synagogue, I pray that these thoughts may serve as your guideposts. Whether you like it or not, as Rabbi Jack Bloom has written, the rabbi serves as an symbolic exemplar for the community. It's a significant challenge of being a spiritual leader and the family of a spiritual leader. But knowing you as I do, working with you as I did and continue to do to this very day, you are more than up to the challenge to present a wonderful example to the Bethel community and beyond. Well, Rabbi Schwab accepts these responsibilities upon himself as he officially is installed. The members of Bethel also have responsibilities. As part of this covenant of, relation, of installation, I encourage members of this community to challenge yourselves. I urge you to make Jewish teachings, traditions, observance and knowledge the sacred focus of your lives. I wanna impress upon you to make your lives God-centered and to appreciate being part of the unique relationship that our people has with the Shekhinah, with the divine presence. I ask you to stand strong in your support of our people, kol am Yisrael b'chol makom shehem, wherever they may reside, to be contributors to the mission and vision of, the conserv of conservative Judaism, to be proud members of the Jewish people, and to stand strong on behalf of the state of Israel and its citizens. And I also urge you to be contributing members of your community, proud of your American heritage and responsible for your fellow human beings. As you have and continue to embrace the Schwab family, I ask you to remember that a rabbi can only lead where there are people who wish to walk with him. That a rabbi can only teach where there are people ready to learn. That a rabbi can only be a model where there are those who are willing to follow his example. I pray as the relationship continues to grow that it may do so in respect, love, and in a common vision on both sides of the covenant. I pray that Rabbi Schwab and this beloved community, which I had the privilege to serve for 31 years, may be endowed with wisdom, understanding, and insight. That you may be blessed with the courage of conviction, strength, and vision. And that you may be steadfast in your devotion to our tradition, our people, and our land. And I pray that my friend, my colleague, my successor, Rabbi Schwab, Michael, may be blessed with the words found in the Talmudic tractate Brachot 17a. The story is told that when the rabbis took leave of the school of Rav Ami, he said to them, may you see the world in your lifetime, may you inherit the world to come, and may your hope last for all generations. May your mind understand great things, May your mouth speak words of wisdom and may your tongue sing with joy. May your eyes look straight before you and may they be enlightened by the light of Torah. May your face shine like the brightness of the firmament. May your lips utter words of knowledge, your heart rejoice in upright deeds and your steps run to hear the words of the ancient of days. May you Michael, Rabbi Schwab and this beloved congregation North Suburban Synagogue be Bethel, be blessed with a covenant of love and respect for many years to come. May we always be in touch for good tidings. May this day be only a tip of the iceberg of the joy that this community celebrates. And may we live in a world of harmony, of peace for the, the United States of America, for the state of Israel and for the entire world. Amen.
And now, as I officially would stand beside Rabbi Schwab, like the rabbi and the bar mitzvah boy, I can't quite do that. And I can't quite put my hands over your head to wish you well. You know that the feelings come from the heart as I offer this very special prayer. Adonai, our God and God of our ancestors, source of all blessing, we pray that the rabbi of this congregation, North Suburban Synagogue Bethel, shall lead it with the blessing of your spirit. Grant Rabbi Michael Schwab a wise heart, candor in speech, the courage to act decisively, and the strength to respond to every challenge with dignity. Give him a full measure of your compassion that he may be the instrument of your ancient promise. I will give you shepherds after my own heart who shall nurture you with knowledge and understanding. And let us say, Amen. Michael, amen. a great pleasure for me to do this as I hand the torch to you with love, with respect, with a great deal of honor, knowing that you will literally go mechayel lechayel and me'ele ele ule ele, going higher and higher. Remember the words of Bethel, alona ale yachol nuchala. We will surely rise up and we will meet all of the challenges. Best of luck in the future. Thank you. I'm gonna ask my family to come forward and to open the ark behind me as I respond to Rabbi Kurtz's beautiful installation and prayers with my prayer of my own. Adonai my God and God of my ancestors, as you renew creation day after day, renew my spirit. May my deeds reflect your glory my thoughts lead to your service, and may I yearn for the trust in you. May it be your will, Adonai, that I never debase your teaching nor misrepresent it to others, that I never utter a word to dishonor you or your people, Israel. Teach me your way, and I will declare your wonders. Keep falsehood far from me. Grace me with your Torah. Protect me from emptiness. Sustain me with your teaching. May the words of your Torah, Adonai, be sweet in my mouth. May I be your faithful partner in bringing the sweetness of Torah to the mouths of your people, Israel. May we, our children, and all the children of the house of Israel revere you and study your Torah with devotion always. And let everyone here say, Amen. Well, there's no one here, but you're all there. Okay, the ark can be closed. Today I stand before you only weeks before the high holidays, truly with a lev shalem, literally a full heart. That beautiful phrase adopted as the name of our high holiday machsor evokes the feeling that I have in my own heart at this very moment in my life. For starters, I just wanna share that my heart is full of gratitude. For my whole large, wonderful, extended, boisterous, compassionate and incredibly talented family. And especially for my wife, Erica, my kids, Ari, Liana, Noah, and Miri, and my parents, Richard and Sharon, who are viewing from their home, my brothers, Ian and Benjamin, as well as their families, and my in-laws, Richard and June, and my sister-in-law, Allison, and her family as well. I love you so very much, and I thank you for all your endless support and for the meaning that you give my life. And I'm also so incredibly grateful for my mentors, many of whom so graciously gave of their time and of their talent such beautiful words today. I am grateful for their love, for their guidance, for their support, and for ultimately helping to shape me into the man and the rabbi that I am today. And my heart is also full of joy at the privilege I have to serve this incredible, dynamic, dedicated, learned and compassionate congregation whose members have literally welcomed me from day one and throughout my life. 
You are indeed also family to me, and I could not be happier to be your rabbi, your partner, and your friend. I don't know how often beshert is used to describe the match between a rabbi and a congregation, but I certainly feel that this connection is beshert. It is deep and special honor to be the senior rabbi of North Suburban Synagogue Bethel, and I will treasure this always. And what a privilege it has been to serve with incredible colleagues, such as those on my Bethel staff. All of you are exceptional people. You are talented professionals. It has been such a pleasure to serve with each one of you, and I look forward to many more years working together. And a special acknowledgement, of course, of my rabbinic partners, Rabbi Kurtz, beautiful words and thank you, who served as my dedicated mentor and wonderful partner for almost 15 amazing years. Thank you for all you have done for me, and the, frankly, more importantly, all you've done for this congregation and community. I am the blessed beneficiary of your legacy and those who came before you. It was indeed an honor to have you install me. And also to my colleague, Rabbi Friedman, whose menschlichkeit, dedication, and talents make him such a pleasure to work with. I look forward to many years of having you as my rabbinic partner. And as well, I want to salute all of the lay leadership that never ceases to amaze me with their dedication, endless energy, and deep, deep love, who keep giving to our community on a voluntary basis with no thought of reward. That is considered to be high accolades and praise in the Jewish tradition. I always share with others that what I feel is so important and such a key ingredient to Bethel's success is our dedicated lay leadership. That's what allows us, as Rabbi Kurtz said, to go higher and higher. A special shout out to Ron Goldberg, current president, and all of the presidents with whom I have served for the incredible amount of time, passion, and wisdom I know you give and have shared with me and our entire congregation. Because of all of you, my heart is shalem. My heart is filled with joy. And my heart is also full of hope. I am so optimistic as I look to the future as to what our community can offer our membership and society at large. Bethel is truly a place where Jewish values come to life and a community that gives us opportunities at every turn to use those values to impact the lives of others in such a beautiful and meaningful way. I'm incredibly excited about the work that we plan to do and the goals that we set to accomplish as we continue to envision the bright future that lies ahead. And it is this feeling of hope that I wanna to emphasize to all of you today. Understandably so, so much of our focus right now is on the unique reality we are living at the moment. The pandemic, for example, has affected our lives in so many ways that we can enumerate and in so many other ways that we don't even yet realize. I can't tell you how much it broke my heart to have to close this field family sanctuary in March to those who wish to daven, to celebrate Shabbat, and to be together. And as happy as I am that we are once again holding services here, it is clearly still not yet the same. But gam ze ya'avor, really and truly, this too shall pass. And the job of leadership, especially on the brink of celebrating a Jewish New Year with all of its built-in potentials, is to help us see beyond what is right in front of us, to provide a vision of the future that will unfold, a future that we can all strive for together. Many of you have heard me speak about my vision for Bethel. I did so last year during the high holidays. Therefore, you know that my vision is centered around the powerful idea that our synagogue community should always be a place in which we encounter the depth, joy, greatness, and true relevance of our treasured traditions as they are experienced today and tomorrow by us, the members of Bethel here on the North Shore. What I mean to say by this is that Judaism has gifted each of us an amazing way of life and my vision for Bethel is that our synagogue foster a sense of excitement about the power of Judaism and its ability to serve as a vibrant, relevant force in our community and for our membership, each and every one of us. 
I firmly believe that the wisdom, beauty, and richness of this great religion, which has been thoughtfully developed over thousands of years, should come alive for us here at Bethel, a place to rejoice at the happiest moments in our lives, to receive comfort during the hard times, to discover insight about how to live our lives impactfully, to encounter moments of spirituality and prayer and ritual, to experience joy in singing and dancing together and being around each other, to find fulfillment in helping so many others, to feel the love of community as we connect in friendship, and to experience a sense of fulfillment in watching our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren grow up with Jewish values and in Jewish community, carrying our tradition on Lador Vador from one generation to the next. Therefore, when I picture scenes of Bethel's present and future in my mind's eye, I see groups of people passionately discussing and debating the lessons of our sacred Jewish texts. I see our membership gathered in the Field Family Sanctuary, the Blumberg Auditorium, on our back lawn, wherever, singing together, engaged in joyous and meaningful prayer. I see smiling children of all ages, from the Steinberg Preschool, the Cohen Religious School, and the Sokol Hebrew High School, excited to learn about Judaism and to create lasting friendships. I see the embrace given to the mourner as our caring community comforts the bereaved and cares for those in need. I see rooms or Zooms filled with engaged congregants enjoying dynamic programs that bring meaning and joy. I see devoted congregants seeking to fulfill the mitzvot with sincerity and passion. I see our amazing lay leadership working side by side with our talented staff, making all of the dreams of our community into a reality. I see a vibrant, diverse, dedicated, passionate synagogue membership who loves their Judaism and who engages with our tradition, using it as a foundation to make their lives and the lives of all around them more meaningful and special. So as I said, I stand here today with a Lev Shalim, a full heart. And this beautiful term is not only the name of our Machsor, but it comes from one of the high holiday prayers within it that says, put your awe upon all whom you have made, let your works revere you, and form one fellowship to worship you with a Lev Shalem. Therefore, Lev Shalem not only means full heart, but as our Machsor translates it probably more correctly, wholeheartedly. So I literally wholeheartedly want to share with you my love and gratitude for everything you have done to support me and this incredible community. I was overwhelmed with the beautiful words shared and I will carry them as a treasure in my heart and will inspire me to keep on envisioning greatness for Bethel. What we have here is so special, and I feel so privileged to have been a part of it all for these years already, and to have now taken on this new role as the congregation continues to move forward with blessing and success. Therefore, truly with the Lev Shalem, I can state wholeheartedly that I believe in the great future in store for Bethel and for all of us. Todah rabah, and thank you all so very much. Before we close, and as I take a deep breath, as I do with many of you on Friday nights, I want to specifically thank a number of people for making this particular event, this particular day happen. To Arnie and Nina Harris and Andy and Gail Brown for your kind, loving, and thoughtful words. And to all the amazing committee chairs and also to all the amazing committee members. You are my friends, I love you, and I thank you so much for everything you've done for me and for today. I also wanna spe send a special shout out to Kim Ephraim, Stuart Hockwart, Ron Goldberg, Judy Berkeley, Jeff Baden, Rabbi Alex Friedman, Kazan Ben Tisser, Abby Lasky, Jonathan Fields, John Petrescu, and the whole maintenance crew, as well as the entire office staff. Thank you, thank you so much for what you do on a daily basis, but in particular for making this day happen for me and for the congregation. And I wanna thank all of you out there on Zoom or on Facebook Live for taking time out of your day to be with me and for the support you have shown to me and to Bethel over the years. I'm incredibly appreciative and so blessed to be the senior rabbi of Bethel. 
I will see some of you after the ceremony. My heart is full and thank you very much again. Rabbi Schwab, thank you for these beautiful words and for your leadership. It's been my privilege for these last five years to serve with you on the bima and behind the scenes. We have been with each other through personal losses and simchas, and we've served the congregation together, and I pray we will for many years. Rabbi Kurtz quoted the words that are found on the kippah from this congregation's 60th anniversary, Alo na'ale, we shall surely go up, for we are able. We know that under your leadership, Bethel continues to be able to go up, and therefore I dedicate this song to you.
shoulders you raise me up to more than I can be you raise me up to more than I can My friends, my friends, what a great day, huh? So many beautiful words, beautiful performance. To go from such a capable and inspiring leader like Rabbi Kurtz to such a capable and inspiring leader like Rabbi Schwab, we're just a truly blessed community. That's the end of our program. We look forward to going forward all together and to our parking lot <laughs> where you're invited to drive by and wish personal uh, um, congratulations and mazel tov to Rabbi Schwab and his family. I suppose there'll be a few minutes interlude, uh, so he has a chance to catch his breath. Um, and then get to work, will you? <laughs> Thank you, everyone. That concludes our program. I believe there'll be a, a PowerPoint presentation for a few minutes. <laughs>